Hello and welcome to, or back to the channel here, and welcome to this first episode, oh that feels weird, of TW9 WWE Challenge Run here. Um, we looked at the State of the Universe, but I mean you can go check that out, episode 0 if you want. If you're watching this as it goes out though, I mean the State of the Universe is WWE right now, so fair. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to be booking Raw and Smackdown throughout the series, and I am excited and I'm ready to get into it, I don't know about you. So, let's do it. Without further ado, let's jump into this first episode of the series. The post-SummerSlam issue of Monday Night Raw. And the show starts with the introduction of, and the outcoming of the new world champion, Gunter. The ring general makes his way out to the ring. World title over his shoulders, he's looking smart, he's looking clean, he's our world champion, he's our guy. We love water. We love Gunter. It's been years, come on, Matthew. <laughs> Gunter in the ring gets the mic, and he says, finally, here we are. An inevitability, if we're looking at it truthfully. The ring general on top of the world. He made the Intercontinental Championship matter. He made it the most important championship in all of professional wrestling. And then they brought this championship in. And whilst Gunter might not have had the Intercontinental title anymore, he was ready for what the WWE may call the bigger championship, the World Championship. And he's watched his championship whilst he's had the Intercontinental title. And he's watched clowns like Seth Rollins. And he's watched undeserving men like Damian Priest hold it. And try to say they are top of the show. They are top billing. They are the best. But here we are now. The Ring General. With the gold. Round his shoulder, over his shoulder even. <laughs> Gunter. He's not shocked. He's not surprised. Okay, this was always going to happen. And he says, if you thought his Intercontinental Championship reign was good, if you thought that were long, you had not seen anything yet. Because now he's got his hands on the World Championship. Nothing and no one is going to get in his way or take it off him. And then, you know, dun, 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 get the bagpipes out. Out comes Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre in a bit of an upbeat mood after his summer slab win. You're shocked. <laughs> Makes his way down, to the, uh, down the ramp. And congratulates Gunter. You know? The one accent I can't do for some reason is Scottish. Okay. <laughs> I'll let you know episode one. Um, why couldn't an Irish man get to the top of the card, eh? I can bang that one out any day, hun. Was that Irish? <laughs> Drew McIntyre congratulates Gunter on winning the World Championship. Congratulations. Okay, finally, someone better and more deserving, I'm doing Irish anyway, than Damien Priest has that gold. But now the problem is, Gunter, that whilst you're in a Connell Championship, it might have been long, your World Championship reign will not because I've got my eyes on what I never lost. I mean, you didn't even mention me when you talked about people who held the world title. I might have only held it for six minutes. But I held it. And I'm going to be the first man to hold that championship twice. When I beat you for that championship. Because bad blood's coming up. And now I finish with Phil. Now that he's done, that gutter trash is finished. I can get back to what I was always meant to be focused on, and that is proven exactly what Drew McIntyre is the best. And so I'm looking at you, Gunter. I'm looking at that world championship. And I'm telling you man to man, face to face, in the middle of my ring, it's mine. And then we burn it down. Out comes well, so much annoyed Drew McIntyre. Seth Rollins, dancing his way down, big smile on his face. 
I hear congrats are in order. I mean, thank you for the lovely words. Gunter, you are right. I was the first World Heavyweight Champion, the first to hold that championship you now have. And I think I had a hell of a reign, don't you guys? Crowd cheering for him, yeah. <laughs> and then, I mean, SummerSlam boys, congratulations for both of you. Gunter, you got that title, Drew. You beat CM Punk. You know, I've had my problems with CM Punk. I was in that ring, I counted that free. Okay? I was there. And congrats, so congrats to you as well. Okay? But, if we're talking about the World Championship, you can't not talk about Seth freaking Rollins, then, can you? Because, I mean, let's face it, okay? Damien Priest owed me a shot at that championship, and even though I might not ever have received what I deserved from him doesn't mean I've forgotten. Okay, and I was okay. I was alright. I did my duty at SummerSlam. I put on the black and white, the zebra stripes, and I did my job. But now, my job is in this ring looking at that gold. Drew, crowd cheering. Drew, not too happy. Drew, Wants that world title. Seth wants that world title. You know, Seth getting right into the face of Gunter. Gunter staring down. Drew turning Seth around and getting into Seth's face as Gunter kind of just makes his way out of the ring whilst they go face to face. And Gunter just saying that he is the world champion now. If you want a shot at his championship, at his gold then things will not be given anymore. They will be earned. For a 70, which, hey, I gotta get used to the rating system. Part one was just Gunter, 71, 62 for part two, 63 for part, 68 for part three. We take that, got the strong to a crowd start. Crowd is hot and rising. No complaints from me. Hey, <laughs> I'll take that. Uh, Gunter, world champ, but he's already got people queuing up to take him on. Oh, let's get into the wrestling. Uh, for the first week's episode of Raw and SmackDown, at least I'm kind of just going to go with, you know, what was announced match-wise and kind of go out from there. It's like I don't assume it's going to be very different to what happens in real life <laughs> because that's just the way, isn't it? Um, but yeah, so we're going to kick off the show with Dakota Kai versus Sonya Deville. And if you know me, you know I love me some Dakota Kai. Uh, the damage control making their returns last week turning kind of face in the process, uh, going after whatever the hell Sen Sonya Deville's group is with Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark. I think at the moment I've called them the punishment um, name pending, I suppose. <laughs> um, but whatever the case, in the end, you know, Io, Kyrie, Shayna and Zoe at ringside, shenanigans do ensue a bit. And the shenanigans do... I'm sorry, is it? <laughs> oh, the first official match of my series featuring Dakota Kai losing, I'm sorry. Thanks to the distraction, Sonya Deville manages to roll up Dakota for the one, two, three. Uh, 55 for the match, I gotta get used to TW again. Um, we've got a lot more details, crowd's still hot. 50 for the wrestling, 43 for the crowd, 56 Dakota, 45 Sonya. It's a lot more numbers in my spreadsheet simulator, isn't it? <laughs> no good blades, though. Uh, information's always good. Uh, but yes, it is the punishment. I'm definitely changing that. Um, <laughs> you come out on top here, much to the chagrin of Connell TW, I can only but assume. As then we go backstage to the lovely Kayla Braxton. Uh, interviewing Seamus O'Shaughnessy. Seamus O'Shaughnessy has got his match with Ludwig Geyser uh, coming up next. Uh, but he has words on Pete Dunne after Pete Dunne's 
you know, smashing him with the shillelagh last week against Bron big, uh, just Bronson Reed. I'm getting rid of the big, sorry. Um, and Seamus says that, listen here, Pete, I'm sorry, Butch, I might have a problem with my name. He never spoke up about it. I mean, it shows you that a tough man he seems to think he is. Couldn't say two words to me the entire time we together. They didn't like his name, but the problem is, you want to know why I'm calling him Butch? Because he's so forgettable. He's so raggedy that I just could not for the life of me, Kayla, I'll be honest with you, remember his name. <laughs> so I just called him Butch. I just called him Butch because that was easier and that was more better. That was more better. That was a better use of my time than trying to remember his name because he doesn't matter. Okay. And if he's got a problem, he wants to come after me, he can try. But the next time he tries to come after me, if he wants to use that shillelagh, then I'll take it off him. I'll give him a proper Irish style beat down, not shove it where the sun don't shine. Now, excuse me. We're not going to talk about Butch anymore because I got my match next and I'm going to show everybody what Seamus is about. For 70, got the crowd hot. Crowd heat at the end is a white hot. Seamus feeling it. I uh, got his beef with Pete. Match with Ludwig next, though. Let's see how we get on. Uh, before that, though, we go backstage. Uh, Dirty Dom, Liv Morgan, swaggering about, feeling good, big smiles on their faces. They bump into Carlito. Um, you know, Carlito's asks Dominic if he can have a word. You know, Liv continues off into their fancy little locker room. Uh, says, don't be long, sweetie. Little kiss. Um, and Carlito says that, you know, they, you know, thank you for inviting me to the, the Judgment Day like you did. Um, but I just wanted to say that I saw what happened at SummerSlam and I, I mean, I know cool. You know, I'm Carlito. I know cool. Um, what you did, what Finn did, what you guys did to, to Damien, to Rhea, that's not cool, bro. That's not cool. Carly, I walking off. Dom looking pretty annoyed. Um, before he hears Liv shout and quickly goes running, of course he does. For a 61. <laughs> Carly, I'm not too impressed by Dom's behaviour. Uh, crowd heat is very hot. Uh, Dominic Mysterio's flavour of the month. Um, well, clearly Liv likes the taste. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> not not like, like that, but not like that. Um, let's get to the ring. Ludwig Geyser in his return to the ring, taking on Sheamus, and it's just a good match. You, you've you seen what these guys can do. You both They're both very good. Ludwig getting to show we can do, maybe shake off any potential ring rust he's got. Sheamus doing Sheamus stuff. It's buyer after buyer with him. Uh, of course, though, Butch does make an appearance. Old Pete done. Um, shillelagh in hand again. He goes to hit Sheamus with it, but Sheamus ducking underneath, turning around, running, going for the bro kick. Pete's on the apron. Uh, the other side of the rope goes for the bro kick, but Pete jumps down just in time. You know, kind of lands, you know, hand supporting his fall on his back on the mat on the outside, looking up at Seamus. Just about dodged that one. Seamus, not too impressed, turns around. Pete Ludwig, guys are just getting up. Seamus runs at him, goes for the bro kick on him instead. You know, shouting to Pete beforehand. Do you want to see what I'm going to do to you when I get my hands on you, you raggedy little bitch? You know, well, he said the B word, so you know it's serious. Uh, Seamus goes for the bro kick, but Ludwig ducking, kind of ducking past the kind of boot, popping up, grabbing Seamus and turning him around with a spinning DDT for the one, two, three. And he grabs a handful of tights as well. Aye, aye. Uh, as Ludwig Kaiser does get the win, thanks to that big distraction from Pete Dunn. 64 for the match, 51 for the crowd, they're feeling it, 59 for the wrestling, 48 Ludwig Kaiser, 71 Seamus. Ludwig was off his game, but they have great chemistry, and Seamus is in amazing form. So Ludwig, let's, you know, he's probably going to get a pop boost from this, get in some good form, Ludwig, don't be off your game. Let's see what we can do with you, I like Ludwig. He's not a challenge, I just like Ludwig Kaiser, honestly, he's, he's good. Uh, I like all of Imperium. Well, there's only two members in it now, but I liked all three of them. <laughs> uh, Ludwig gets the big name. Big win. So we go backstage to the GM's office. You know, Bron Breaker's there. In a Continental Championship now, over his shoulder. Knocks on the door, you wanted to see me, walks in. And sit, well, standing there chatting. is Royal General Manager Adam Pearce. And SmackDown General Manager Nick Aldis together. What could they be talking about? 
Bron Breaker, though. You know, not much time for talk. He's got a match next. Um, and he's Intercontinental Champion now in time. Means money for the woof woof dog guy here. Um, but they say, just hang on a minute. We're just waiting for one more person. <laughs> Knock on the door. Yeah. In walks L.A. Knight. The United States Championship over his shoulder. I'll just shout. I just really love that you can do the roster backgrounds now. It's just nice, you know. The clear indication that we're on the Raw. These are the Raw guys. These are the panel guys. It's just better. I just like it. Um... And yeah, LA Knight walking in, Brum Breaker not too impressed, you know, someone else coming onto his turf, the dog's turf, he pissed all over the floor, <laughs> sorry, um, LA Knight getting into Brum Breaker's face a little bit, and person they call calming things down, saying that they've been talking, you know, first of all, congratulations to you both, new United States champion, LA Knight, and the new Intercontinental champion, Brum Breaker, a new era, for Raw and SmackDown for both of these championship. And that's why we wanted to talk to you both here to get it done at the same time. Okay? Adam and Nick say they've been talking. And they agreed that they're sure the WWE Universe agrees as well. That they don't want a repeat of what happened with the last man who held your championship LA Knight, Logan Paul. Boo, crowd booing. Um, where a man is uh, enabled to become the what fourth, third longest reigning United States champion, holding it for over 270 ish days, only defending the championship twice. We don't want a repeat of that, okay? These fans don't want a repeat of that. I'm sure you guys don't want a repeat of that either. So, we thought we talked about it and we thought we'd give you some incentive. So my inner self, I don't, I don't even know which one of them I'm trying to be right now, but we'll be Adam, it's his show right now. Myself and Nick have been talking, and we have agreed to a fighting champion's advantage. Meaning that, and it will apply to both your Intercontinental Championship and your United States Championship, Every defense of your championship you make will count towards your fighting champion's advantage. Which won't just be a bit more money in your pocket, LA Knight's violin, yeah. But will also have a potential big benefit. Because if you can get to 10 defenses of your championship, so Braun, if you defend your inner contile 10 times, LA, if you successfully defend your US title 10 times, then we will allow you, through your fighting champion's advantage, to vacate your respective championship and earn an immediate shot at your brand's respective world championship. So, Braun, if you defend that championship ten times successfully, you walk out your tenth bout for that gold, still an Arcana champion, then you can walk into this office, hand me that championship, and I will put the contract down for your match with whoever the World Heavyweight Champion is right now. So if you guys, I'm sure you won't. You guys are fighters. I respect that, okay? You guys are warriors. But now, you guys. There's a little bit more of an incentive to defend those championships. I mean, you look at Gunter. Intercontinental Champion, and now, six months ago, less than that, five months ago, four months ago, four, four months ago, and now he is the World Heavyweight Champion. And now you have a much, even easier, potential path than he did. Okay, that's all. <laughs> LA and Braun, happy Braun going to walk out, he's got a match next, man a few words, LA Knight's in his way, you know. Uh, he says Bron Breaker invented a new catchphrase that will likely boost his ability on the microphone as he now has a go-to line. Um, I'm trying to think of something now. Because the only thing I've got is, like, I show speed, he just barks in LA Knight's face. <laughs> Leave in the comments if you've got a better idea for me. As Bron Breaker storms past, LA Knight, big smile on his face. LA Knight, United States champion. But before you know it, what all these people be knowing... 
LA Knight WWE Champion. Yeah. Walks out. Smart in space. 59. Very hot crowd. LA looked excellent. We take that. Yeah. Um, in the TW2020 series, I did option C, uh, which I stole from TNA, which this would be a much more likely series to steal from TNA considering the new relationship, but hi de ho um, I'm not doing option C, but I am doing this because I... I thought of it, and it's it can create it creates good storyline opportunities, I think, as well. Uh, so yeah, if they defend their championship ten times, they will earn a shot at they can vacate it for a world title shot. Incentivize title defenses. After the whole LA night of Logan Paul the Barkle, <laughs> you know, um, good, good. Fifty nine. We take that. We got a long show to get through. Um, I'm glad we're only doing we're doing individual episodes, by the way. If you didn't know, you'll know from the thumbnail. Uh, in TW 2020, obviously, we did Raw and XT and SmackDown in the same show. Nope. We're just doing Raw and SmackDown separate episodes. Um, yeah, we go to the ring. Uh, Bron Breaker's made his way out. Ready for his match here against Odyssey Jones. Getting to show what... He, well, Odyssey's getting a little bit of match time. See, we can do it in Bron Breaker against the big guy. Just kind of getting to show his strength, kind of, as the new IC champion. Uh, picks up a win in the end. Gorilla Press Power Slam. Oh, my. I'm picturing Bron Breaker doing that to Odyssey Jones. Visually stunning. 54 for the match, 46 for the wrestling, 40 for the crowd, 58 Braun, 34 Odyssey. We take that. Very hot crowd as the Intercontinental Champion, Braun Breaker. Woof, 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 Uh, jeez. <laughs> Please, someone come up with a better idea than me woofing as his new catchphrase. <laughs> uh, Braun Breaker on top. As we cut to a vignette, um, for something I'm excited for. We cut to... A fancy office for Kiana James. Little placard in front of her with her name. And Kiana says, down on NXT, she made a name for herself. She showed what she could do, former NXT Women's Tag Team Champion. But now she's here on Monday nights. And she's been taking some time. She stepped away from the ring, focus on her business, get it into good position. But she's ready ready to come to the ring and show what she can do. And Kiana James Enterprises is open. While she's been gone, she's been making calls. She's been talking to some big names. And she says, not only soon will you see what Kiana James can do, you will see what her world-class client list can do. Because Kiana James only employs the best. Okay, Kiana James Enterprises only employs the best. And she says, very, very soon, you will see what the best is. For a 32, yeah, we got to build her up. I do really like Kiana James, honestly. Doing nothing on Raw. She's doing niche. Um, so I'll do something with her. And yeah, I'm going to give her a little stable. She's going to build up. Kiana James Enterprises here. I love this background, by the way. Made it myself because it doesn't exist. Um, genuinely one of my favourite ones I've made. I'm a big fan of it. Um, and I'm excited. I'm excited to show off Keanu James Enterprises you know it's my kind of stuff you will see <laughs> 32 though crowd hot but cool and let's try and get them back up because we go backstage and smashing his way around is the Intercontinental Champion Bron Breaker you know Caleb Braxton catching him asking him congrats on your win thoughts on what we heard earlier tonight with Adam Pearce and Nick Aldis and Bron Breaker says they can put whatever advantage they want into anything, okay? He doesn't need an advantage because he's Braun Breaker, okay? You saw what he did to Odyssey Jones. You saw what he did to Sami Zayn. You see what he's done his whole career, what he's going to continue to do, okay? And he says he's going to hold this Intercontinental Championship as long as he wants. Maybe he'll get 10 defenses. Maybe he'll get 20. It doesn't make a difference. Because at the end of the day, Braun Breaker could just so easily win all the gold Huh? Why would I give up this championship when I can go hunt down Gunter, take him out, and have that as well? Hmm? Hmm? When he's interrupted by... I skipped past it. <laughs> That's so me. I accidentally double-clicked. Um, he's confronted by Bronson Reed. Ignore the screen, I'll talk for a sec. He's confronted by Bronson Reed, who beat... Um, Seamus, last week, thanks to Pete's distraction. Um, and Bronson Reed wants a shot of that. He says, 
You want to be a fighting champion when he gets one step closer to the world title? Put that on the line next week against me. And Bron Breaker says, I'll see you there. And then, you know, woof, 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 woof. <laughs> please, someone help me. Um, yeah, next week, Bron Breaker, Bronson Reed, the Intercontinental title. Should be good. We go to the ring, LWO. It's a friendly contest. They're all in the LWO who are getting zilch screen time. Um, so let's try and show them off. And getting a chance to show what they can do a little tag match against each other friendly competition Zelina's gone by the way she's not in the end LW anymore it's just these four uh we got Joaquin Wild and Cruz del Toro one side masked magic as I've called them let me know if you have a better name but I'm kind of vibing with that right now Rey Mysterio and Dragon Lee on the other good friendly high flying contest told them to steal the show they've done very well as masked magic pick up the win Dragon Lee pinning Cruz del Toro with the Desnucadora sure for a 64 pretty good 44 for the crowd 54 for the wrestling but a 64 overall i will never understand these ratings uh dragon lee was off his game but still got a 55 so we take those 66 ray 47 joaquin 49 cruise no complaints good little match um yeah just wanted to kind of let these guys show what they can do and we'll see how we get on with them going forward good guys i like dragon i do um we go backstage to a little interview. Um, Caleb Braxton interviewing Team Gable. Jad Gable, Brutus Creed, and Julius Creed about their main event tonight against the Wyatt Six. And Chad says that these weirdos and freaks can run around in their masks, turn the lights off, act like the boogeyman. But in the end, this is the WWE, okay? This isn't a horror movie. This isn't the... So Louisa, yeah, the swamps they're probably used to. This is the WWE. This is a wrestling ring, okay? And nobody in that ring can go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, really, with Chad Gable, okay? And no one definitely could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Chad Gable, Brutus Creed, and Julius Creed, the Creed brothers, okay? Chad says he has assembled the elite squads you are seeing in front of you of these wrestlers. Good, old-fashioned wrestling Okay, and they can turn the lights off if they want. The fans can hold up their little phone lights. <laughs> but in the end, this is the WWE, and the W stands for wrestling, and no one is going to out-wrestle Chad Gable. For a 47, crowd's hot, Chad's feeling it, main event, later tonight. Let's go to the ring, New Day versus AOP, Kofi's back in action. Um, and yeah, uh, largely... Uh, go with IOP trying to keep Kofi in the ring because he's been out injured. Play off that a little bit. They won't let him tag in. They're tiring him out. Is Kofi hurt? Kofi, big comeback spot. Tags in Xavier. Flies in. Bish, bash, bosh. Rolls up <laughs> in the end <laughs> for a 59. Uh, we'll take it. Hot crowd. 55 wrestling. 46 crowd. 61 Xavier. 62 Kofi. 51 Akam. 47 Razor. We'll take it. New day get the win here carrion not too happy on the outside what are you gonna do mate huh? what the hell are you gonna do um pete dunn walking around backstage confronted by Ilya dragunov he says to pete that what he's been doing is not it okay he tells pete that he should fight like a man he has a problem with Seamus. Get in that ring and fight like a man. Don't go sneaking around with weapons. Okay? And Pete, not too happy, saying, you know, who are you? Why, what, what is this your business? You want me to fight like a man? All right, then. Gets right in his face. I'll fight you next week. Walks off. 60. Ilya versus Pete next week. Banger, by the way. Um, <laughs> two guys who carry the next UK between them, with, throw a Gunter between them, or throw a Gunter in the middle, and we'll call that a day. Um, but yeah, it'll be peak next week. Should be good. You're building up a little card for next week. Bron versus Bronson. Um, Pete Ilya. The next steps in the whole Drew, Sheamus, not Drew, Sheamus, Drew, Seth, and Gunter thing. Getting some good stuff. Um... But before we get to the main event, we cut to a little video package. We go to a church. This beautiful church. Crowds of people there in the pews. As a familiar face. 
walks up. Reggie. Reggie walks up to the front. Holding a book in front of him. We don't see the title of the book. He places it down on the pulpit. I can't remember what it's called. The altar in front of him. Before he opens it, he grabs the script's mask and puts it on. Okay. If a mere mortal looked upon these texts without the mask on, they would it would burn them, I'm sure. He puts the script's mask on, ready to read from the holy scripts. And he opens it up. On the first day, on the first day, he created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth, the earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And his spirit was hovering over the face of the waters. And then he said, you know what he said? He said, let there be light. Let there be light. And there was light. And he saw the light. He saw that the light he made was good. And so he divided the light from the darkness. He called the light day and the darkness he called night. And so on the first day, the evening and the morning were born. Can I get a hallelujah? You know, crowd going into raptures as he closes the text. Uh, if you're going to want to hear about... What happens on the second day? Tune in next week. I wonder what this could be for. Oh, if you've never seen one of my series, they can get silly. But not this. This is deadly serious, obviously. <laughs> Let's go to the main event. Team Gable versus the Wyatt Six, Rambling Rabbit, Mercy the Buzzard, and Huskus the Pig. Uh, Joe Gacy, Dexter Loomis, and Eric Rowan. And yeah, I mean, Team Gable are trying to keep this old school. They're trying to keep it on the mat. Technical wrestling, beautiful, gorgeous. The Wyatt Six are freaky little bastards. <laughs> the lights are out. They're trying to mess with their mind, okay? You got bloody Abby the Witch. Abby the Witch? Abby the Witch. On the outside, skipping around. La 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 la. Like she's Huntress in DVD. Uncle Howdy, he's just kind of sitting there. You know? The lantern's there. Like it's staring into your face, like one of those weird, weird eye pictures. And in the end, the Wyatt Six and their creepy shenanigans get into the Team Gable's head, it would seem. And it is the Wyatt Six who come out on top. Um, Rambling Rabbit, Eric, pinning Brutus Creed with the way. Um, no. Yeah, go on then. I said it's storytelling. Oh, 61. I will take that. Um, I need to take Maxine off Chad. That's fine. 49 wrestling. 42 crowd. 68 Chad. 45 Mercy. Who is Dexter Loomis. 43 with Joe. 38 Eric. 49 Brutus. 48 Julius. Good. It's good just to know where everyone kind of is as well, honestly, at this stage of the series. <laughs> just to see where everyone's at. Um, I'm happy with that. 61. Good main event. As then to close out the show, out comes on the latest stop of the Liv Morgan Revenge Tour, <laughs> these bastards. The women's world champ Liv Morgan, Dirty Dom, and their all tag champs, JD and Finn. Shh. Poopy and grins on their faces make their way out. Liv Morgan, the happiest of all, saying that she told you so. Cut that. No. Out comes Liv and Dom. Just Liv and Dom. Not Finn and JD. Just Liv and Dom. They make their way out. Liv happy as can be. Dom happy as can be. And she says she told you so. She told you what was going to happen to Rhea Ripley. Because in the end, she took for granted the incredible thing she had in front of you. The incredible man she had in front of her. Not me now. I will never take for granted my dom dom <laughs> and you see Rhea I've got everything 
I want, everything you want. I told you what the Live Morgan Revenge Tour was about. I was gonna take everything from you. I took your championship. I took your man, little kiss for dumb. And your precious judgment day, I mean, what's left of it? There's no Tom. And what happened to Finn and JD? Uh, Dom, do you know what happened to Finn and JD? Dom saying, let, I don't know, let me, maybe let's see if the, if the camera guys backstage can find them. Looking at the screen, we cut to it, and there is your world tag champs, Finn Balor and JD McDonough, beating the hell out of Carlito. Just laying waste to him backstage, slamming him into the wall, beating him down. Carlito not having a fun time. And then they start to drag him down, throwing him down the ramp, you know, into the ring. They slide him in, you know, Finn and JD holding him up to look at Dom. Dom leading down saying, I tried to let you in. You want to tell me what's cool, huh? Huh? I'll show you what's cool, huh? Stands up, big kick to Carlito's face. Carlito down, Dom tapping Finn on the chest, telling him to go up. Finn climbing to stop rope. Coup de gras to Carlito. Laid out. Finn and JD with their towers, live with hers, Dom with hers. With it, well, Dom with his man. <laughs> his woman, jeez. Um, as Finn gets the mic and he says, Damien, you did it to yourself, just like Carlito here did it to himself. Okay, you, Rhea, your judgment day. It's come, it's gone. You're old, you're outdated. We are what's left. Your judgment day is dead. Long live Neo judgment day. Drops the mic. Finn and JD raise their title. Liv, big smile on her face. In between them all, raises her women's world title. Dom, smiling. Liv puts her boot over the fallen Carlito. You know. Ah, so that'll be the closing image. Okay, no Damien and Rhea this week. They're licking their wounds. They're not here. Um, and yeah, for a 67, we take that. 74, when it was just Liv and Dom. 54 for the attack backstage. 58 in the ring. Carlito's not the best seller. He did poorly, but... Hey ho, I'm happy. <laughs> um, I struggled with their stable name. What I did, honestly, I looked at the. Def I took your advice. I took Connell. Shout out Connell to you. Took your advice. I looked at the default stable backdrops. I saw Neo. I liked it. It's giving Judgment Day, but also Neo meaning new, um, and they're like the new Judgment Day. So we take it. I I'll take that. Um, for 67, we take that. Carly, I was not going to be in it for me. Don't know what WWE are doing. Not for me. Though. I'm going with. Liv, Dom, Finn, JD. We'll see what Carlito gets up to. But 67, we end on a white hot crowd. I'll take it. As this debut episode of Raw comes to an end here at the Von Braun Center. Four. We get a 66. I'll take that. People have got to be built up. Storylines got to be built up. Lost up up on 42 regions. That's early TW. You're going to get low ratings till you build things up. Popularity, skill wise, for them to get the higher ratings. But I will take that. That's a good first episode of Raw for me. Um, as we head towards Bad Blood, which should be a good show. Got a good good card planned. I'm excited. Um, that's going to be it for today. I hope you have enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Uh, predictions for Judgment Day card-wise. What do you want to see happen? Where do you think these storylines are going to go? Um, or what do you want to see throughout the series? Let me know your thoughts on this episode of Raw, this first episode. I haven't booked and recorded an episode in a long time, so that felt kind of weird, but I'm happy. I'm glad to be getting back in the swing of it. I've missed this. I've missed you guys. This is fun. I'm excited. TW9, baby. Let's get to go. Comments down below. Subscribe so you don't miss a thing. We've got a debut episode of SmackDown next post SummerSlam. What's going to happen over there? You're going to have to tune in and find out. So leave a like, subscribe for more, leave your comments. And as always, I just want to say a very special thank you for watching.